Hi and welcome to this draft replay with Rigel B. My name is Rigel and today I'll be bringing you um, my first Strixhaven draft. Uh, just a little disclaimer, this is pretty early on in the format so I may not be familiar with all the cards and might get some card names wrong um, and my card evaluations won't be perfect also but we're all learning still so uh, learn with me. Okay, looking at our first pack here, I think we have a pretty easy first pick. This Gnarled Professor is a pretty incredible card. Uh, a 4 mana 5-4 Trampler on its own would already be a pretty strong card. But um, the fact that you get to go tutor your best lesson that you have in your sideboard um, really puts it over the top. It's, a, it's an extremely great card. Other cards in the pack here... Um, I'd say the next best card that we have in the pack is probably this Ardent Dust Speaker. Um, as far as uh, red cards go, I think that that one's pretty strong. The card advantage that you can gain off of it um, puts it up there. There's a couple of good lesson cards here in the um, Necrotic Fumes and the Inkling. Uh, both the Pledge Mages are, are pretty decent. I think the green-blue Pledge Mage is better than the red-white Pledge Mage. Um, looking at our next pack here, uh, we don't have any real obvious pick. Um, if we wanted to stay perfectly safe, we could take this Quandrix Pledge Mage, as that would stay in green. And we can, from green, you can go either green, blue, or green, black, are the two supported archetypes for it. I think the, the most powerful card in the pack is this Practical Research. Um, also, that Heated Debate is a, a strong card. Um... But I think the Practical Research is just the strongest card in the pack, so I'm going to take that and leave myself a little bit flexible. I don't know exactly what color combination I'll go yet. I could just move into red-blue. Um, it is possible to go Teamer in some instances. I've seen that happen. Um, or, you know, we could end up green-blue just splashing that one card, green-blue without splashing the card. Green. I could abandon it altogether, depending on how the cards come. Um... I'm going to try to stay a little bit flexible and just take the most powerful card early on. Uh, in this next pack, um, Shock's, Shock's an excellent card. It's very cheap and efficient. Uh, the Heated Debate is also a great card. Um, and this Illustrious Historian, I, I think that Illustrious Historian is a pretty good two drop, but um, not on par with the other two cards. Uh, as far as... As far as um, cards in green there's nothing really to compete with these red cards um so i think and i as far as which one's better between the heated debate and the shock i'm not sure but i think that the heated debate being able to kill something that's for toughness uh is pretty makes it a little bit stronger so i'm gonna go ahead and take that and uh we'll see where we go from here Cards I like in this pack, um, I like a lot of the the green and black cards here. The the Dina Soul Steeper is pretty strong in that black green card deck if you if you get life gain. Um, the Professor that's the four three um, of Zoomancy or something like that. Uh, that's a pretty strong four drop getting the pest with it, as well as the Specter of the Fens. I think is a pretty strong four drop. Um, I think this Professor is the strongest of the and. And it keeps me open to being able to go um, Teamer if that's where I decide to go. Looking at the next pack, there's that um, Kelpie Guide. I think the Kelpie Guide's pretty strong. Um, the uh, Eureka Moment, which is a card draw spell in blue-green. Um, I think that's a nice card draw ramp spell. Uh, as far as other cards, I think this 2-drop in green is pretty strong. Um, but there's actually a decent number of strong two drops um, in green, uh, so I don't necessarily value them too highly. Um, I also think that red-white lesson card is a pretty strong lesson card, but we're not looking to pick that up right now. Um, as we'd like to be either base green, blue, and just splashing red, or, or something like that. It's a little bit harder to go full three colors in this set. It is possible... Um, but uh, you, you'd like to have some decent mana fixing to do that. Um, and there's not excellent mana fixing cards at common. Okay, looking at this next pack, um, there, is, there is an excellent green-blue card in this 2-drop 1-1 Flying Death Toucher. 
the Needle Thorn Drake. Um, but there's also some excellent cards in the green black archetype. Um, this Blood Researcher, I think, is particularly strong. Uh, the Rise of Extus is is a pretty strong removal card. I mean, it's expensive, but you get card advantage out of it. And this Dina Soul Steeper. Of the two between, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and venture into a black green card here, as I think it's looking rather open. Um, between the two, the Blood Researcher and the Dina, uh, I think it's a close call. The Dina has the advantage of being a two drop, but like I said, there there's actually a decent number of two playable two drops in black and green. And the upside, um, as far as the life gain trigger that you get off the Blood Researcher, is much stronger than the life trigger that you get off of the Dina. So I think I'm going to try out this Blood Researcher. And here now, I, I have another difficult decision. I get an excellent removal spell in this Mage Hunter's Onslaught. Um, there's another Blood Researcher, and there's a Fractal Summoning, which I think is a pretty good lesson to be able to go fetch. And then a quality 2-drop is all. Uh, I think it's between the Mage's, uh, Mage Hunter's Onslaught and the Blood Researcher. And in the dark, I would take the Mage Hunter's Onslaught. But I think I really want to try to cut a specific archetype. And for that, I'm going to take the Blood Researcher first and try to dissuade anybody else um, from going into that. I remember that I had a Dina in one of my very early packs, and if nobody's in black green, maybe I could table that. Um, and so I'm going to try and discourage people from being in that archetype. Here there's nothing really for me, so I just take uh, a lesson. It's, it's good to have a variety of lessons to be able to go fetch. And here I, I get a pretty decent pickup for my deck, uh, Hunt for the Specimens. I already have... Um, a lesson or two that I'm, or maybe I only have one lesson at this point, but um, the Hunt for the Specimen is going to play well in the archetype, um, and I am going to want to try and pick up some relevant lessons because I also have that Gnarled Professor. Village Rites, um, really the only card for me here, but I think it plays well in this archetype. You usually have pests that you can uh, sack if you don't, um, if you're not using it to sacrifice a creature in response to a removal spell. Um, I think the village rights can play pretty strongly in this archetype. Here, there's not a lot for me. I could take this green blue Scryland and keep in mind that maybe I want to splash a blue card, but I think it's more relevant, even though I'm not too high on this three drop three two that gains two life. Um, I think with these two blood researchers already, uh, and not a lot of ways for me to be gaining life already, I'm I'm really gonna prioritize that. I'm also gonna try to. And this Spectre of the Fens tabling is, is excellent for me, uh, as that does pair really well with the Blood Researcher. It's exactly the type of card I want in this deck. I'm also going to be looking for other cards that have repeatable life gain effects. Um, and here I table one of those two drops that I talked about in green and black. Um, there's a, a plethora of quality two drops that you can play, and this is one of them. Um, and the Dina, the, the early Dina did table, so that's an excellent sign for me. Uh, that maybe this archetype's pretty open. And I look at that, I get three two drops, three playable two drops in a row right towards the end, which I couldn't ask for more. That's that's really going to help with my curve. Okay, um, this Draconic Intervention, I do think it's a pretty strong card in the blue-red archetype, um, but obviously we're not looking at it. And looking at my opening pack, I don't actually see a lot of cards that I'm too interested in for my archetype. Um, so maybe I'll speculate on splashing uh, that black-white card. Um, so cards I'm going to try and prioritize going forward are cards with repeatable life gain effects. The type of cards that are here in this um, set, you have Overgrain, Overgrown Arch as a repeatable life gain. Um, the Tenured Ink Caster can be really particularly strong with these Blood, res blood Researchers. In the second pack, I get an Augmenter, um, and I think that there's nothing here that really competes with it. The Augmenter is um, much stronger in the green-blue archetype, but it's still an excellent card. 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three Trampler, with a pretty strong upside if you get to 8 lands. Um, makes it uh, quite a powerful card, in my opinion. Other cards I'm looking for for the repeatable life gain, um, Witherbloom Apprentice is an excellent source of repeatable life gain, as well as the Witherbloom um, Pledge Mage, uh, which both trigger off of casting spells. They're Magecraft effects, so you'd want to have a decent spell count for that. 
here in this next pack, um, I think the decision comes down to this inkling summoning to Lash of Malice. I think they're both uh, good cards. The Lash of Malice being a, a very cheap interactive card, um, I think it's pretty useful. But like I said, I have this. I, I already have two um, learn learning cards in my deck, and I and so I want to get some lessons for them to pick up. And I think that Inkling Summoner is a, a pretty decent lesson to pick up. Um, basically, as far as the lessons go, like anything that could potentially make your main deck in you know uh as as you know not even that great a card but a playable if you need it to is is actually a pretty strong lesson in an early pickable card um here i get another blood researcher so so that's an excellent result for me and now i'm really going to be prioritizing those life gain um triggers uh be it the cards that I mentioned or uh, creatures with lifelink would also do it. Um, anything where I could start putting some counters on those blood researchers would be great. Um, and then as far as the lessons go, like I like to try to have a sort of a toolbox of lesson cards that I can go fetch with my learn um, spells. Just having that variety can really help um, get you the right card at the right time. Here I pick up a Weatherbloom Pledge Mage. I do think that this field uh, trip is a pretty strong card as well, but it plays much better in blue-green um, as you're going to have a lot more effects to to make use of the ramp. Um, there's a lot more top-end uh, payoffs in blue-green. But this Weatherbloom Pledge Mage is exactly what I'm looking for, a repeatable life game effect. Um, as a 5-mana five 5-5, five, five, it's also just a, a pretty strong threat to, to be able to throw down there. So I'm going to take that. The Cram Session, I don't think that's a very good learn card, even if you have life gain triggers. Um, I think I would be sad to have to put one of those in my main deck. But I could see a world where it does happen. Okay, this Brackish Trudge, I think it's a decent card in this um, in this archetype. But these two cards over here, the Mage Duel and the Witherbloom Pe Pledge Mage, are, are definitely cards I would want more than that. And I think that the the Mage Duel is a particularly strong removal card. Um, and so I think I'm going to prioritize that here, even though I, I would really want that Pledge Mage. I don't have a lot of removal spells. I think that Mage du picking up that Mage Duel is great. And here I get to pick up uh, Mage's Onslaught, which is... Uh, pretty excellent removal spell. Can just sort of deal with anything. Um, strong card. Uh, I'd be happy with either of those other ones. The Lashing um, or the uh, the Hunt for Specimens. But the removal is clearly better. Here I get to a second Mage Duel. Um, that 4 mana black green creature is pretty intriguing in this archetype i think it's decent i don't think it's better than this mage duel here um he, in this pack there's nothing that i really want to play and i'll just take that and put it in the sideboard uh here i get another quality two drop um you know all these two drops are just sort of interchangeable that's why i didn't necessarily take them too highly um and I do think that the Scurred Colony is probably a little bit better than the um, Reckless uh, Amplomancer. And here in particular, I think that uh, having two of the Amplomancers already, they get worse in multiples. Um, as you can only, if you have five mana, you can only pump one of them. You, you can't make use of the other one's ability. It's as if the second copy of it doesn't have that ability on it almost. And so... Um, the more of them you get, the worse the each. They have diminishing returns. So having two of the Amplomancers already makes it a pretty clear Scourged Colony. I think the fact that the Scourged Colony has reach um, is very nice uh, and puts it a little bit above it. And the fact that it can become a 4-4 four -four without having to pay any mana once you get up to 8, eight land, I think makes it the more powerful. These last picks are not as strong as the ones I got in the first pack, obviously. They're all going to the sideboard. 
Uh, here I've, I've got some, uh, a primal command, which I don't know how to evaluate it at this point. Early on in sets, I frequently will just take the rare t uh, so that I get some experience playing with them and, and know how to evaluate them better because that, that opportunity won't come up as much. Um, whereas getting commons and uncommons, you'll you'll get them a lot more frequently, so you get to evaluate them. Um, but with the rares coming up so infrequently, I, I try to take them early and um, get some playing experience with them so I know how powerful they are. The Primal Command, it is a life gain. Um trigger and it has some relevancy so uh i i'm gonna try it out see what it looks like this pack does not look very powerful for a second pick i'm gonna take one of these two uh cards on the right here the hunt for specimens or the fanatic um the lifelink creature could be a repeatable life gain effect but i think with um with a couple of learn spells already in my deck uh I'm going to try and pick up some quality lessons to fetch. And I think this hunt for specimens is going to play well. It's it's also going to give me a life trigger for the blood researchers. Um, and here I pick up a pest summoning. This is perfect. I would really like the Spectre of the Fens as well. But having three, um, three learn spells in my deck and not a lot of quality lessons to go fetch yet. The pest summoning is perfect. It's going to play really well with my blood researchers, the the multiple pests that I get there. Um, in this pack, uh, I have another little decision to make. There's an agonizer in Morris. I don't think that that's the type of thing you want to play in limited as much. The fractal summoning's a pretty pretty nice lesson, and like I said, I like to have a variety of lessons I can go fetch. Um, and you know, when, when you're in the late game and have lots of mana and you draw one of your learn spells, being able to fetch a, a lesson that can make a huge creature is pretty strong. So, but this, like I said, I want to have a lifelink creature also as it's a repeatable effect for my blood researcher. So even though I'm not as high on the moldering Karak in general, um, I think with the three blood researchers in my deck, taking it's probably worthwhile here i pick up a lash of malice i think that's excellent um pick up for the deck i needed some early cheap interaction um and here it looks like i i have a choice between the lash of malice um another one of these three twos that gain two life um as well as this uh was the three mana uh card that can create a 2-1 flyer or make an opponent sacrifice. I think that's a, a fine card as well. I think I'm going to take the Lash of Malice here, um, just being cheaper. The The flexibility of this Umbral Juke uh, is it's fairly nice. It, it makes it a, a pretty strong card, um, being able to just make a 2-1 flyer when, when the sacrifice isn't that great. Uh, versus being able to make make them sacrifice when when they only have one good creature out there the flexibility of it does make it a pretty strong card and the fact that i already have two lash of malice this is another card that gets worse in multiples as they may not always have two toughness creatures that it can kill so um i think that taking the umbral juke is is a uh over the third lash of malice is probably uh right uh it's possible that i should have taken that Umbral Ju the first Umbral Juke over the second Lash of Malice, but I'm not sure. I haven't played with the cards enough yet. Um, and here I get my option of another Lash of Malice or just a two drop. I think, like I said, the, the third copy of Lash of Malice is going to be much worse than the first two as they'll run out of creatures that it can target profitably. So I go ahead and take another two drop, but having 25 playables already is probably not going to make the cut. And here there's a, a Leech Fanatic. Um, it is a lifelink creature, so there is a chance that it could make it over one of my other two drops. Um, as I'm, I am a little bit short on repeatable life gain effects for my blood researchers. Ideally, I would have picked up um, more cards like that that I talked about earlier. Here I pick, I get, I table that fractal summoning, which is awesome. Um, adding to my lesson toolbox, it's pretty excellent another umbral juke um i'm gonna have some difficulty deciding what to cut 
already here, so we'll see. Uh, so we'll move that to the sideboard first. Um, okay, so we've got to make at least three cuts uh, if we want all the cards, if we don't want anything that's in the sideboard right now. Um, looking at cards to cut, I I feel like I've I have um enough two drops that I'll probably cut some number of two drops here, and and it looks like the reckless Amplomancer gets the the first cut. Like I said, the Scourge Colony I think is a little bit better. Uh, all these four drops look pretty decent. I could see myself cutting the Moldering Karak, but. I, like I said, I don't have a lot of life gain triggers for the Blood Researcher, so we'll see. Same with that, um, the Spring Main, the 3 drop 3 2 that gains 2 life. Um, I could see that getting cut, maybe. Uh, also, this Dina, it, it could be a consideration because I didn't end up with a bunch of repeatable life gain effects, so the Dina isn't too strong on its own. Um, the Umbral Juke gets cut. I'm not sure. Uh, I did end up with a decent amount of removal here in terms of the two Lash of Malice, the two Mage Duels, the Mage, uh, Mage Hunter's Onslaught. Um, so maybe I can go ahead and get rid of it. It doesn't really play, it doesn't synergize with my deck necessarily. Um, I do think it's a pretty strong card and maybe it's better than a Lash of Malice. I don't know. Um, and I, I don't have any playing experience with it yet, so I, I may be misvaluing the Umbral Juke. Um, but we've got to make some cuts. It's possible I could consider cutting the land, as my curve is pretty low. Um, but I do have... Yeah, it's diff it's difficult. I, I don't necessarily... I have payoffs for land. I have the two Scurred Colonies, as well as the Augmenter Pugilist. Um, I have three different learn spells, and learn spells um, make you a little bit more mana hungry as they fetch you another spell that you want to be able to cast. I have the Spectre of the Fence that's a mana sink. Um, and so it it's possible that I don't really want to cut that land after all, and um, I think it'd be too dangerous. I think my deck's pretty decent. I, I There were some tools that... I wanted that I didn't get, um, but I think it turned out all right. I think it'd be too risky to play with just 16 lands, so I go ahead and, and cut another two drop. And maybe that cut is the wrong cut, but uh, like I said, I didn't have a ton of repeatable life gain effects, so that Dina loses value. Um, and so I think I'll, I'll probably play it like this. Uh, that'll be the end of deck building. Let's get to the game. Okay, we're here for round one with our black-green life gain deck. Taking a look at our opening hand. Uh, it's definitely keepable. It doesn't have a lot of our best cards, but we have a two-drop and we've got some removal spells. Looks like we're playing against blue-green. Um, they have a pretty decent lesson to go fetch as... Like I discussed, um, any lesson card that could conceivably be main decked, and a 5 mana 4-4 four, four is something that you could conceivably main deck. So that makes it pretty excellent. The learn spell that they played, Cram Session, that's not very great. So the combination, you know. But, uh, and here they played a field trip, ramping up. I've, I've had some excellent draws, a couple of Blood Researchers, as well as the, um, the... That three drop spring main, um, whatever it is. Uh, unfortunately, they get to ramp into a Witherbloom Pledge Mage. Uh, that five five is going to be pretty difficult to deal with, as a lot of my removal in this deck is situational. Um, I only have the Mage Hunter's Onslaught that can deal with it outright. Other than that, I would need to get a big creature myself before this Mage Duel could take down the Pledge Mage. Um, so, so that's going to cause some problems, but. I have two researchers here, um, and I'm looking to grow them with this spring main 3-2. Um, and here you see the power of the mage duel. 
Uh, they they get to double spell here, making the mage duel a one mana removal spell for my quality creature. Um, so now their their board's looking pretty intimidating already, uh, and I guess that's when when you're able to ramp into fatties. Um, that's the payoff right there. So now um, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to deal with their board. Uh, I think it's best for me to start growing my researcher here. If I can get that grown, uh, uh, right now as a three three, I can already use it to take down the four four. If I get it growing again, I could I could take down the wither bloom pled ple pledge mage. Um, and the gaining life is nice, but they're already looking to they they have another lesson that they fetched there that's going to grow one of their creatures, and now. I, I, this is a pretty bad situation. Um, I don't feel like I can just sit here and take the full 11 damage. Um, and while I hate to, uh, three for one myself, they are down to just one card in hand. Um, and that might allow me to stabilize the board a little bit. Uh, if I draw a green source and can play out my creature after that. So one thing that could, um, really screw me up though is if they they have one card it could be um i think it's called the arcane suspension or something like that it's a two mana blue spell that gives minus four minus zero and learns if they sniff out what i'm doing here and use it proactively um that could really ruin this how this goes but already it's pretty bad for me trading three cards for one card um I guess I guess you could consider it two cards because they played that spell to to give it the plus two plus two counters, but um, that was just something that they had fetched off of a learn spell, anyways. Um, but we do manage to deal with that, and and now uh, maybe we can start to turn this around. Um, I think while they're mostly tapped out, is when I'd like to try to make this fight spell. Obviously, it could go wrong. Uh, there are cards that they could have, and it looks like they... Arcane Subtraction, okay, so that was the name. Um, and that's that's pretty disastrous for me, as I don't get to take down their 4-4, their four, four, and they get to learn, they get to go find another spell to work with. Um, but at least the spell that they're finding isn't too relevant. Uh, so no, no need to attack now that it doesn't have any power. Um... That, that was a really unfortunate su sequence for me. Maybe it would have worked out better in the future if I had played the 3-3 three, three this turn instead and maybe gone for a double block or something like that. And then when they use the Arcane sus Suspension, uh, they still only kill one of my creature, but I could finish off their creature with the Lash of Malice. And I'd still have that Mage Duel in hand. So maybe that would have been a better line to play is try to line up a double block. It's always scary to try and double block. Um, that's when they, the opponent can really blow you out with some sort of removal or bounce spell or something. Um, so that's why I tried to just get the mage duel kill in when they were mostly tapped out, but they had a relevant spell there. Okay, so here uh, I have to decide between attacking or trying to leave it back to double block. Like I said, it's always scary to try and double block. My opponent still has two cards there. Um, and they're going to be drawing another one. If they did have a bounce spell or removal, double blocking would be pretty disastrous. So I think I'm going to go ahead and attack here. There's always a chance that I could draw something that allows me to gain life next turn. And then my researcher can just try to trade straight up with their 4-4. Four, four. Um, I could consider 2 for one myself again, but at this point, um, I would be significantly behind as they have those three cards in hand. And they, you know, oh wow, Bookworm. Uh, this is a pretty strong payoff for, for the blue-green ramp strategy. Uh, a recurrent threat. And it puts me in quite a bind here as... Just on the board, I have no blocks I can make that they, that I can survive the next turn if they attack with both. So, um, and I didn't draw a very relevant spell. So I'm going to have to go ahead and sacrifice one of these creatures to see if there's anything I can draw to survive. 
Um, and so then the question is, which one do I sacrifice? Uh, the augmenter has the potential of getting big if I, if I have some way to survive and get two more land drops, but that doesn't look as relevant as, um, the line I'm seeing here as far as how I might be able to survive the next turn is if I sacrifice the augmenter and I draw exactly a land and a Witherbloom Pledge Mage, then I could cast the Witherbloom Pledge Mage with L Lash of Malice up. And then I could line up some blocks where my Researcher blocks their 4-4 and my Pledge Mage blocks their Bookworm. And then I go for the Lash of Malice on the Bookworm. Oh, actually that would... Uh, and then I gain a life up to 5 and they trample over for 4. So I would survive at exactly 1. Um, and I'd be able to clear their board. I'd be in a pretty bad spot because I'd have used all my resources and they still have a couple cards in hand and the bookworm that can keep coming back. But it at least would have, um, if I had top decked those two exact cards, I could have stabilized the board and survived the next turn. Um, but as it was, it wasn't meant to be. And we'll see you in the next round. Okay, after a tough loss round one, hopefully we'll manage to recover and do better this time. Looking at our opening hand. Again, we have a perfectly fine opening hand, but nothing spectacular. Um, we just curve two drop into three drop. We have a cheap interactive spell and we have a learn spell so we can go fetch something. I'll lead with the swamp here. If they play a two drop, I'll go ahead and use my Lash of Malice. They give uh, they give the good game here. When, when people say the good game early in in the game i just assume that they're wishing me or wishing us a good game and so uh, i go ahead and wish them good game back and we did get an excellent result of them playing a two drop and us getting to lash of malice it um as a one drop and curve into our two drop three drop etc here they play a lower hold excavation i think this is a uh, it's a pretty decent card in the red-white archetype. Um, it synergizes well with some of the better cards in that archetype. So, um, And it gives you a pretty strong late game, as well as a way to help get to the late game and that you can gain life with it. And um, If you do get to the late game, that ability to just pay five mana and create a three two over and over can can take over the game pretty quickly so um it does have a lot of powerful effect there this igneous inspiration i think that's an excellent card in red uh they they fetch uh a, a card to go fetch another land so maybe they're pretty land light um and they decided to take down my scurred colony instead of my three two uh I anticipate they're, they're just thinking ahead to me possibly getting to eight lands. Um, or maybe they have a flyer that they wanted to get rid of my reach creature. So now my hunt for specimens. I have a few different options here. The pest summoning in general is what this deck is going to want because of all the researchers. But I don't have any of the researchers right now. I think my choice now is between the inkling summoning and the fractal summoning. Um... The Fractal Summoning, being able to make a big creature is useful, but uh, I think the ability to have an evasive creature might be really relevant, having a flyer, the 2-1 flyer, um, as well as the possibility that taking the 3-drop would allow me to um, possibly double spell in a future turn. Say if I draw a 2-drop next turn, or if I want to go Inkling Summoning into Lash of Malice, um, Whereas with the Fractal Summoning, it's always basically going to take all of my mana, so I won't be able to double spell. So I think all those things combined give the Inkling Summoning a slight edge here. Okay, so they manage a 4-3 here. Um, so that's going to hold back part of my team. I'll still go ahead and attack with the 3-2. I think I'm the aggressor here, so... Um, and I'm perfectly fine with the trade if they want to take that, but they don't. So we get in for three damage. And we do get to double spell as we top deck to two drop. Um, so that worked out pretty well for us. Our board's looking pretty good. Um, but we're sort of out of gas in hand. Um, hopefully they just play something this turn that we can kill with Lash of Malice. 
um, so that we can just keep attacking and uh, spending our mana. Unfortunately, they have a 3.33, which is pretty great for them. Um, just another creature that can hold back my team. I draw a land, so I'm running out of gas a little bit. Uh, I'm still winning, willing to trade my 3-2 for either of their creatures. Um, and this evasive creature is getting some work in. But with their excavation, just netting them a life gain every now and then, um, I'm not applying quite as much pressure as I would like to. I'd like to really be pressuring their life total. Um, but they can afford to just take it. And maybe we'll get into a situation where where we are able to make advantage, advantage of our favorable board position right now. It's not hugely favorable, but we do have the evasive creature. And if we draw, if they if they don't leave enough blockers back and we draw a removal spell or something like that, maybe we could get a good attack in. Here they go ahead and, and attack us. Um, and I have a decision to make. Uh, do I want to throw this pest in front of one of them and then finish it off with the Lash of Malice? Um, which I think is a trade I would normally take, but the fact that it's possible they play a blocker that the Lash of Malice could kill, say they play two creatures and I can kill one of them with the Lash of Malice and get a great attack in, um, I think incentivizes me to, to hang on to the Lash of Malice and not trade off my creatures, I'll just take the hit for seven, and then just sort of hope that I can get a, a big attack back if they just play something that the Slash of Malice can kill. Unfortunately, they have a Relic Sloth here, which is another big fatty creature, and um, this Lash of Malice, both last game and this game so far, the Lash of Malice has looked pretty bad. Um, it's it's sort of been at its worst, like in in both these last two matchups, uh, and and it's it's entirely possible we were considering the Umbral Juke during deck building, and in this position and the in my round one matchup, Umbral Juke would have been much better than the Lash of Malice. Um, so it's possible that I have built my deck wrong and evaluated these cards wrong, and I should have the Umbral Juke in place of, of this Lash of Malice. Um, but it's early on, and, and we, hopefully we have um, plenty more games where we can sort of evaluate the Lash of Malice compared to an Umbral Juke, see which one's better in which situations. We did have one of these Lash of Malice on turn one kill a creature, which was pretty efficient. Um, here, as far as what I'm going to attack with, um, I'm definitely getting into this flyer, and then I have to decide, am I willing to two-for-one myself, um, to take down this Relic Sloth? Um, and I think that, I think probably what I should be doing here is, is attacking with everything. Um, which isn't what I ended up doing, but I think I should just attack with everything. They'll probably block my, uh, Spring Main Servant. And then I'd get in for seven and finish off their sloth, um, taking them down to five. I I think my position's just desperate enough that I, I should try to take something aggressive like that and then try to... Maybe it means that they have to stay on defense, and if they don't have an answer for my evasive creature, maybe it could get the job done. Um, as it was, I just attacked with the Leech Fanatic and the Flyer as I decided maybe I could just... Um, trade that 2-2 for their 4-4 four, four, as opposed to giving up my 3-powered creature, uh, which trades favorable with their other two creatures. Um, but as it was, they didn't block anyways. Um, so we got a hit in with the Fanatic, which was great because we got the Life Link off of that as well as the extra damage. Um, but I think I should have attacked with everything. Here, they make an attack, leaving back two blockers. I think it's a good opportunity for me to just trade off my 3-2 with their 3-3. Three, three. Um, no guarantees that they don't have a trick, but... Uh, their 4-4s... Four they have too many creatures here in my way. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can draw some useful cards. Maybe a, 
a 5-5 five five would be nice, or a learn spell so I could go get my fractal summoning. Um, here they go ahead and make their 3-2, uh, so they get the trigger off of the scry, as well as the effigy. I'm going to have to decide if I want to kill that 3-2 with my Lash of Malice end step, or if I wait until I draw to see what I draw. And seeing as how I don't have a lot of ways to use all this mana that I have, um, I think I can wait. With Lash of Malice being so cheap, I can wait until I draw first. Again, they gain a life. Um, it's making my race pretty difficult. I draw a Mage Duel. Which is not the worst, but also not the best. Um, it can't take down either of their big creatures, which are the ones that are really causing me problems. The thing it can take down is the 3-2, which is also the thing that dies the Lash of Malice. So, um, either I can just attack with my Flyer and plan on Lash of malice their their 3-2. Um, or I could try to get a little bit tricky and... Um, trade multiple cards to, to, I, I feel like I need to get a little bit more aggressive. Um, they're going to take over the game pretty quickly with this excavation. And so the line I decided to go for here is I'm going to mage duel down the three, two, which isn't a great feeling as that's the only thing that can die to my lash of malice. But then I'm going to go ahead and make an attack with my leech fanatic as well. Um, Partly it'll gain me life, um, but also now I'm just going to trade two cards for for uh, their 4-4 four, four if they block like that. That way they don't have that Vigilance attacker that um, has been able to play offense and defense. So another bad trade for, for me, um, but you do what you can. Here they get that uh, Radiant Spell Wielder. The Radiant Spell Wielder is an excellent card in that archetype. Um, it's just so powerful. Uh, but lucky for us, we just top deck um, basically the only thing that we could have to, to deal with their Radiant Spell Wielder. Um, lucky us. We're definitely going to get that off the board. And then... Uh, We'll just get an attack with our flyer. Still can't make good attacks on another 4-3 here. Here they go ahead and uh, give us the good game, but it doesn't look like this game is over to me. They have four cards in hand. I can't imagine they have nothing. So I don't know if they're wishing me a good game because they're winning or wishing me a good game because they think they're losing. It's a little bit confusing. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off on... On reciprocating with the good game until the game is actually more clearly determined. They go ahead and make an attack. I'm obviously not blocking. I need my attackers more. Um, and they can easily have a combat trick to uh, really blow me out if I go for a double block there. And this colony is about to grow to a 4-4 four four if I draw a land. So I definitely don't want to trade. I draw a land. Which, on the one side, isn't great, but at least it makes this colony a 4-4. They're getting priority, so I think they have some sort of combat trick. I think it's still worthwhile to go ahead and make an attack here. Most likely they have, yeah, the Enthusiastic Study. So that's going to allow their, their Pilgrim to trade with my colony. But I do get them down to 4, which is, um, if they don't gain life off of their Excavator, it's a 2-turn clock with my Flyer, which um, could... It could do enough, depending on what they have in, in hand. Um, I'll get, Next turn, I'll get to attack with the 2-1 and leave the 1-1 back to chump block. Because they're going to attack me down to 8, and if they play this 4-4 four, four that they have in hand, they'll have 8 worth of attackers, but I'll have the 1-1 one, that I can leave back. So if they don't gain life, and they don't have other relevant things in hand, maybe I could steal this game. Um... I'm not too optimistic, but there is a pathway to victory if they if they don't have the right cards. Okay, so I'm down to eight. They didn't gain life, so that's great. And I draw a 2-2 Menace, 
which can also pose some problems depending on um, what their situation is over there. It may mean that they have to stay on defense if they can answer my summoner, uh, my, my 2-1 flyer. Um, they might have to stay on defense with their other creatures, though. Not knowing until their end step whether or not they gain a life. Here they give me another good game. In this situation, I think it probably means that they're winning with another um, plus 3, plus 1 on Trample. And looking at the blocks I have available, um, even blocking with both my creatures won't allow me to survive through... Um, unless I do double chump, which is not something I'm willing to do here. Uh, if I did a double chump, then I would barely survive at 1. But... Um, it just doesn't give me enough pathways to victory. So I'm just going to hope they don't have the plus three, plus one in trample. But they did have it. So we go ahead and give them the good game. And unfortunately, we start 0-2 here. And uh, we're in a difficult spot. Hopefully, we can go for the reverse sweep and rattle off seven straight. Um, but so far, what we've taken is that this Lash of Malice hasn't performed uh, optimally yet. So it is a situational card, but we'll see in future games if it if it performs better. I think it's I I still think it's a highly a decent card for me, and um, I'm not sure whether it's better than Umbral Juke or not. But we'll we'll hopefully learn from our future matches. Okay, see you there. Okay, we've had a couple of tough losses the first two rounds, so now we have our work cut out for us if we're gonna try and make a run and get the seven wins. Looking at our opening hand, um, again, we have a fine opening hand as a keeper. Uh, it's a little bit slow, but I have some more powerful cards than my previous opening hands have had. In particular, it's nice to see this uh, gnarled um, protector, as I can't wait to try that one out. Here we draw a three drop. That's great. Hopefully, we draw a forest next and can just run out this gnarled protector. Um... Uh, having drawn another big spell, we could easily stumble on lands here and and uh, slow down, but hopefully that won't happen. Unfortunately, they played a 2-drop that doesn't die to Lash of Malice. Um, not the most common thing to happen, but again, our Lash of Malice uh, has missed its mark. Okay, so they uh, they get a Vortex Runner, and we draw a hunt for specimens so not a land but at least something we can play um and as far as what we should fetch i think here it's between pest summoning and inkling summoning um with the researcher out there the pest summoning is pretty appealing but there's no guarantees that it's going to survive and i don't think that the pest summoning is the the creatures are going to be too effective here as both the creatures they have out are three toughness the summoning providing some evasion has some appeal to it um so i go ahead and get the the evasive creature um give me another attacker and i do have another learn uh spell coming in that gnarled protector so i will have uh or professor so i will have a chance to um go fetch that if I decide I want it. Here they get to remove my researcher, so so now I'm happier with my choice of getting the summoning. Um, and who knows, depending on what our draws are, maybe the gnarled professor will go fetch uh, fractal summoning instead or something like that. Now they get an attack in and I have to decide, do I want to trade this pest plus a lash of malice to take one of them down? And I'm sort of thinking that it's worthwhile. For one, I get to use my mana here. Um, but also, like, by removing that three powered, uh, in the future it could be a blocker and they could find some double blocks for my 5-4 or my 5-5 five five that uh, could have been beneficial to them. So getting that off the board right now may mean that they have worse, they don't have as many opportunities for good blocks later. Um, and so now I have a decision between the Fractal Summoning and the Pest Summoning. Right now, stuck on four lands. I think it's probably best for me to just get the pest summoning. Um, the fractal summoning just making a 2-2 is not very impressive. And 
with more researches in my deck, there is a possibility that this pest summoning can be good. They play a Quandrix Pledge Mage. That's an excellent card, um, especially early in the game like this. So I, I will probably want to go ahead and kill it before it grows too big. And I drew the perfect card for it, Mage Duel 2. Um, so now I can save my Mage Hunter's um, Onslaught. Uh, unfortunately, I make a, a mistake here. I, I forget, you know, the cards are a little bit new, and I just forget that I can make the Mage Duel cheaper by casting one of my summoning cards first. So I, I definitely should have gone Inkling Summoning first, and then played the Mage Duel here to kill the Quandri Quandriplex Mage, or Quandrix Pledge Mage. There you go. Um, so that was definitely a mistake. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know if I just forgot that it would make the Mage Duel cheaper, or if I forgot that the summoning things are spells. Maybe I thought of them as creatures and just wasn't paying attention. But in any case, that was definitely a mistake. I draw land, which is excellent. Now I get another fatty out there. Um, and my board's looking pretty overwhelming. Uh, and with more removal in hand and, and tons of gas still going here, uh, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to deal with this. And they don't find a way. So we pick up our first win. Hopefully first of seven. All right, see you next game. Okay, we've uh, picked up a win, and we're going into round four of our draft. Um, hopefully we can keep it going. Looking at this opening hand, um, it definitely has some issues here with only the two swamps to work with. Um, we're missing an entire color, and we only have two lands. Um, we are on the draw, so uh, that sort of when when you have a hand that is land light, being on the draw is certainly beneficial as it increases your likelihood that you'll have drawn whatever land you need before you need it. Um, that being said, I do ha only have nine green sources in the deck. Um, drawing black lands with this hand isn't necessarily going to be great. Um, I need specifically my green lands. With nine sources, um, it's definitely possible that we stumble and miss. Um, if I do draw a green source, this hand looks perfectly functional. Uh, and and it perfectly functional even just drawing one green source. Um, with, and even if I don't hit it on turn two in order to get the Scurred Colony, but if I, I, if I miss once and hit it on turn three, um, I think that'll be good enough to make this hand perfectly functional. I decided to go ahead and keep and draw a forest right off the top. I mean, that's incredible. Um, but yeah, even if we had missed... A turn um, with nine sources I, th I think there's a high enough chance to draw that that's why being on the draw I definitely would have mulligan if I were on the play um, and it was close as as is but being on the draw um, and having nine sources and as many as three draw steps before I really needed it I think it was worthwhile to go ahead and risk it here my opponent um, goes ahead and uses a creative outburst to to make a treasure token you really never want to have to use your your seven mana spells that way creating the treasure token um they did it to cast a blue spell it looks like their team are colored and missing on, on blue mana um i'm i'm managing to curve out pretty effectively here i got to go two drop three drop and then another three drop growing my researcher uh, my researcher could end up posing them some significant problems. Here, I could use a removal spell just to get a, a great attack in, but I think I think it's worthwhile to just sort of save my removal spell and offer a trade with the 3-2 on their 2-3, um, and then continue to develop my board. I have two out of three of my best uh, removal spells in the deck in my hand, um, and with especially with that Mage Hunter's Onslaught, its ability to kill anything, that's the only thing in my deck that can just um, kill anything uh, straight up.
And so I, I don't necessarily want to use that too aggressively. Um, here the hunt for specimens. I'm going to fetch either Pest Summoner or Inkling Summoner. I think this time with the Researcher out there, the Pest Summoning is is the better choice. Um, I think it's going to play out pretty well, especially with the removal that I have in hand, meaning that even my little pests may be able to attack in pretty effectively. So I don't need the evasion as much. Here they play nothing, uh, but they did have stops, so they probably have something. Um, I can't think of anything that really blows me out. Uh, yeah, Burrug, Befuddler, that's not too big a deal. I would have expected them to trade, though. I would have expected them to play block the Scurred Colony or something like that. Or use it to shrink a pest and block a pest if they wanted to keep um, their Befuddler. And yeah, they just stumbled too much, and that was a quick win for us. Um, unfortunate for them. I, it could have easily been me stumbling if I missed my forest. Um, but hey, we'll take the wins we get. See you next round. Okay, now we've rattled off two wins in a row, and we're hoping to make that seven in a row. We'll see how that works out. Looking at our opening hand, uh, it's perfectly keepable again. Um, and this, you know, it sort of shows the power of these learn spells, as this hand would be pretty anemic, except for that these learn spells get to go fat, fetch another spell. So um, I have more action than it looks like. And here I do get to go ahead and answer their two drop with my Lash of Malice. So this is an in another instance of Lash of Malice working out really well for me and allowing me to get ahead on board as opposed to behind. And having drawn this, uh, the Pugler, uh, I think it makes a pretty trivial uh, decision on turn two to play the Colony. Um, if I hadn't drawn a 3-drop, there's some argument for playing a Hunt for a Specimen so that I could fetch a 3-drop to cast on turn 3 um, to allow my myself to use my mana much more efficiently, because then on turn 4 I could two, play 2-drops two, two again. But having drawn a 3-drop, I think it's good to just go with the one that attacks for more. And you saw me make that attack into their 1-3 that could block. They don't know whether or not I have a trick um, that could finish off their 1-3, so I don't know if sometimes your opponent won't block. I, I didn't think that I would need the colony on defense. So um, I went ahead and, and made the bluff attack. Here we could use a mage duel to, to remove their blocker, but I think that that's um, too spewy. Uh, we don't want to use our quality removal spell in that fashion. It is true that mage duel can't necessarily kill anything unless I get a bigger creature out there. But um, I still think that it's it's too worthwhile, and instead I'll just go for two two drops here. Um, go fetch something re relevant. Um, and here we have the pest summoning, the inkling summoning, the fractal summoning. Uh, I think that it's it's between the fractal summoning and the inkling summoning. The um, evasion can be useful here, and I don't have enough land to make the fractal summoning huge but um we'll just go ahead and get both of them um over the pest summoning as as probably option number three um though some argument for the scry to draw card uh but yeah we'll pick up both of those here they go ahead and play uh spectacle mage this is a pretty important card for these blue red decks as they they frequently want to have a lot of spells that cost five mana or more because those are the really powerful spells and ways of making it cheap. Um, really, really play well in that blue-red deck. So if at all possible, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to remove that Spectacle Mage and not let them play a five drop. They did miss a land drop, um, but if they... And so they if they had any five drop in hand, they'd be able to play it on four mana uh, if that spectacle mage is still out there, um, whereas if I if I kill it, then they'd have to draw a land in order to play a five drop instant or sorcery. Um, that combined with the fact that I have this uh, spectral summoning as a flyer, I want to remove their flying blocker. So I go inkling summoning into mage duel and get my attack in. And here they're stopping and thinking. Uh, I can't imagine that they want to just chump block i i 
can't think of any one mana instance that that would be relevant here as far as enabling them to have a profitable block. I guess, okay, so they make this jump block. I think to me that means that they have Draconic Intervention in their hand. Otherwise, I couldn't justify this jump block. Um, and so right now I'm figuring it out and I go to take a look at what instant or sorcery they have in their graveyards to see how much damage they're going to be able to do. And they have the heated debate. So when they exile that, they can do three damage and wrath my board. So I think that's the only thing that explains that jump block. And they do indeed have the draconic intervention to wipe my board. Not a great result for me. Um, but it's still anybody's game at this point. Uh, I could go, I I want to play one of my five mana spells. I could go Fractal Summoning for a 3-3, three, three, or I could go Primal Command. And I think in this situation, it's better for me to go Primal Command, as this Fractal Summoning, I might want to make it bigger later. And um, this Primal Command can go fetch my Gnarlwood Professor, or Gnarled Professor, um, the thing that can is 5-4 Trample and can learn uh, to go get another spell. And then I just have to decide between gaining 7 life or putting one of their permanents on top of their library. And I think it's better to put one of their permanents on top of their library. They've been missing land drops. Setting them back a whole entire draw step is pretty useful. It's, um, it's basically just card advantage. You're, you're uh, setting them back a full extra turn to what they would draw in their in their next several turns here they have a tome shredder but they don't have anything that they can exile with it so it's going to stay a 2-2 for a little bit um maybe they'll have spells in hands that they can play but otherwise it's just a three mana 2-2 haste uh we drew a researcher so we could be mana efficient here and go the researcher plus fanatic um and that wouldn't be too bad as the fanatic would be able to grow the researcher but as long as it can attack but i think it's better to just go ahead and play my 5-4 trampler and go fetch another um another lesson even though it's not the most mana efficient play here they just pass the turn that's a little bit interesting uh it could mean that they just don't have anything to play it could mean that they have counter magic, maybe. They could have the things they could have is reject and counter spell, um, as well as there's one that just does instant or sorceries. Um, so for a little bit, I'm thinking here, maybe I want to go Leech Fanatic, which can't be rejected, into Pest Summoning, which also can't be rejected, um, to sort of strand their mana. Uh, but. In the end, I don't think it's worth necessarily putting them on reject. Um, as next turn, it's entirely possible that I want to play this uh, Spring Main Servant. And so it's much better for me to have that Blood Researcher out there. So I just go ahead and play Blood Researcher and Leech Fanat Fanatic instead of trying to play around reject. And... While it would have been nice here to draw a land and uh, double spell, uh, this is this is not so bad. Um, drawing a specter, that's going to be a good card. And again, they didn't do anything. Um, they they could have a combat trick at this point, um, which would allow them to block the leech fanatic. Um, and you know that. That wouldn't be great for me, but I have such a huge board advantage, um, and the fact that it still blo grows my blood researcher, and this is this is not a bad result for me. Them having to discard a really high quality spell, granted it's one they can't play for quite some time, but um, if they ever got into a situation where they could, that's a really powerful spell that they had to discard in order to kill my leech fanatic and grow their. Uh, Tome Shredder. Okay, here they get a, a time walk, and um, they can use the extra turn to eat that and grow their Tome Shredder. So, so they're getting it up to where it can block my 5-4. Um, but I still have this 4-4 four, four Menace. I still have a pretty impressive board, but they have mana to work with now, and I imagine those last two cards are spells as they were missing land drops earlier. 
Um, so we'll see what they can manage. And they manage a pigment storm to take down my 4 4 menace. And uh, with this tome shutter being big enough to, to block my professor, they're. They're trying to claw their way back into it, but I still have a lot of gas in hand. And I want to go ahead and trade off this Tome Shredder so that my smaller creatures can can attack. Um, after the, it, it would be bad for me if they had an Arcane Subtraction here. Um, as that would, that would play out pretty well for them. But I think based on how previous turns have happened, I, it wasn't too, too much of a threat. Now I have to decide... And I think it's best for me to go to fract with the Fractal Summoning. This puts Lethal on board, uh, which is excellent. And then also, okay, so they did have the Test of Talents. That was the one that can just counter instant or sorcery. Um, also, playing the Fractal Summoning this turn, if I draw a land next turn, it'll allow me to double spell uh, with the two cheaper spells there. Um, or if I draw like a three drop or a two drop, I could manage to double spell as well. Um, here they're just taking a, a good look at my deck, trying to figure out what all I've got in there. It can inform their decisions going forward. They draw a pretty decent two drop for the situation. Um, I definitely don't want to attack into that 2-1, allowing them to to get the ability to um, exile it for a 3-2 creature. I'd rather just leave it on the board and make an attack in the future. And I did draw a 2-drop so that I could double spell. Here they draw another uh, rather small creature, um, but it is holding back my ground creatures for now. I'll just attack in the air. I don't want to let them trade off that 2-1 that, that they can get another creature out of. And then um, playing the Pest Summoning... Uh, I have a decision between using the Drain Effect off of the Spectre or playing the Pest Summoning. Um, and I decided to go with the Pest Summoning. I'm not sure that that's correct. Uh, either one can represent lethal next turn. It's possible I should have just activated the Spectre. But next turn I'm looking to get a uh, an Alpha Strike in. Um... Combined with the drain effect off of the specter, that should be lethal. And they go ahead and throw in the towel. So we have managed three victories in a row. We're well on our way. Um, all right, see you next time. Okay, we're back for round six. Um, after starting off with a rough two losses, we managed three wins in a row. And we'll see if we can keep it going. Okay, so just like last round, uh, we have a hand that's uh, pretty land light. But unlike last round, this hand can function a lot better off of just one mana of any type. If we draw a forest, um, we should be able to function for a little while off of just that. Um, another difference, though, is that we're on the play. So we're going to have fewer draw steps to manage to hit our land in. Luckily, we go ahead and draw land right away. So we know we'll at least be able to have a functioning um, hand for a little bit. And here we get our black source as well. So that's excellent. Pretty easy here to just develop with our 3-3 three, three Trampler. Um, not a lot of option there. Okay, so they manage another creature. Um, and I have four mana to work with, and I have some options. Uh, but I think the best option is just to attack in, see if they want to double block, and if so, Lash of Malice is going to blow them out. And if not, then I'll just go ahead and play my four drop, um, probably Professor of Zoomancy. Uh, I, I could also go just Scourge Colony plus Lash of Malice plus even Mage Duel if I want to, but I just don't feel like any other creatures are worth, um, using our removal on yet. And with the possibility of this Lash of Malice blowing them out if they go for a double block, I, I don't want to just use it on one of their, uh, creatures proactively. So now that they have a bunch of mana up, um... It's going to make combat a little bit more tricky, but if they want to trade with any of my creatures, they're going to have to double block anyways, so I'm already getting a profitable trade just by letting that happen. And then if they want to go for any sort of combat trick, I can blow them out with Lash of Malice. Um, but I, I won't necessarily try to blow them out with Lash of Malice proactively when they have mana up. 
Um, I, I definitely want to let them act first. Uh, so they do go for the double block here, and I'm just fine taking my two for one. I even get a pest uh, to stay there. And, and uh, yeah, as opposed to going for Lash of Malice to, to wreck them, um, I think it's best to just let those that trade happen and develop another creature to the board. Okay, so the this creature that they played is pretty good for their white red build, but with Mage Duel, I can use this uh, Moldering Karak to to beat it up, and then I'm going to be having a good attack, and I'm going to lay the Scourge Colony afterwards. So I'm in a pretty dominant position here, and they think so too, so they give it in. Uh, and we managed to pick up another win. All right, we'll see if we can continue it next round. Okay, after a quick win last round, we're um, trying to get to win number five now. Uh, looking at this opening hand, uh, it looks perfectly fine. We've got a nice curve. We don't have any of our uh, bomb cards necessarily, but um, these are all suitable cards. Um, yeah, a lot of times you don't even need a very very strong cards to win if you just have a nice curve. But speaking of strong cards, um, I managed to draw a Gnarled Professor, which is going to be excellent if I draw another land. Okay, so as far as what I'm going to fetch here, um, I think the options early in the game are Inkling Summoning and Pest Summoning, and seeing as how I don't have my second black source, I think it's going to make it pretty clearly the Pest Summoning. So my opponent's getting priority here, um, which kind of leads me to believe that maybe they have Opt or Brainstorm. Uh, the fact that they didn't cast it, uh, I guess they had this pr Prismary Apprentice that can get um, unblockable when they do cast the spell, so maybe they're just saving it. Um, if it was Opt, I might have expected them to just go ahead and cast it. Brainstorm, maybe they have a reason to wait. We're just going to keep developing. Um, I'm going to play the creature that's going to attack for the most. Okay, here they, uh, they go for a Vortex Runner. And they make an attack. So now I have a decision. Um, do I want to trade off my 3-2 for their 2-2? Uh, and... It doesn't necessarily seem like I should because um, mine attacks for three and there's only attacks for two. Uh, and I've got more life to start with here. So I could be a bit of the aggressor. But on the other hand, this 2-2 two -two in the late game can pose some problems to me. And um, it could represent their ability to double block um, in the future, possibly. So... I decided to just go ahead and trade it off. It's not the greatest trade for me, and maybe it would have been better for me to not and just attack back. So now I have another decision to make between Inkling Summoner and Fractal, Fractal Summoning. Um, I still don't have my second Black Source, uh, and I do have a decent number of spells to cast out of my hand already, so I don't need whatever I fetch right now to be something that I cast right away. Uh, so, so basically I have to decide which one's going to be more relevant in several turns from now. And it's unclear, but if I draw several lands in a row, maybe this Fractal Summoning is going to be better. Now here they go for an attack into my Gnarled Professor, which is pretty strange as there's not a lot of way ways for them to make this not a two-for-one. I anticipate that that means... They either have um, Enthusiastic Study or um, Sudden Breakthrough, uh, maybe Infuriate, cards like that. And so I, if they had Sudden Breakthrough, they probably last turn would have made their attack before laying their creature, unless they just drew it. So I'm thinking that it's most likely Enthusiastic Breakthrough. Um, and I didn't, even though trading my card, one card for two of their cards is pretty good, the Enthusiastic Study is going to get them a card back. And because I have this Mage, mage Duel in hand, um, I kind of wanted to have my big creature out there. So while generally it's good to take a two for one, I felt like I could get pretty aggressive with my big creature here. 
uh, by not letting them use that trick. Okay, so now they play the opt. Maybe that's the spell that they had in turn one that was giving them stops. Okay, and now they, they leave their creature on defense and leave three mana up. So it looks like they're really hoping to get this trade off uh, with the Enthusiastic Study or Sun Breakthrough. Probably Enthusiastic Study. And so I have a decision now whether or not I want to let them make that trade. They left three mana up. They didn't do anything with their mana for their turn. I could just hope that they can't spend their mana any any way if I don't let them use their trick and just um, develop my board. Because if, I, if I'm using, uh, you know, several mana every turn to develop my board and they're trying to leave three mana up every turn, their board is going to fall drastically behind mine. So if I just, uh, if I just let them not use their three mana this turn, they may not have the luxury of leaving it up in the future. They may have to just try to de deploy to the board instead. And then I should be able to get a, a good attack in with a, maybe a mage duel, um, first or something like that. And a big alpha strike. Okay. Another Prismary apprentice for them. And it looks like they're going to continue to leave three mana up. Uh, this, this really isn't a path to victory for my opponent. If they don't have some other way to use their mana, um, as if I'm spending six mana a turn to develop my board and they're spending two mana a turn to develop theirs, they're going to fall behind very quickly. Uh, and, and I, I definitely, I think that it's good for me to just let them rot on their mana again. Um, as I don't know exactly what kind of lesson they're going to fetch, uh, with their enthusiastic study, but not having, not giving them that option of getting that card, um, it can it can make their future plays more awkward. So I think I'm just going to attack and continue to develop my attack with my flyer and continue to develop my board. Um, and yeah, they're they're falling significantly behind here, just having three mana that they don't use every turn. You really can't afford to waste your mana that much, and maybe they have something else like a. A counter spell for this or it'd have to be the test of um whichever one does the counter for instance or sorceries but it doesn't look like they have anything and they uh they go ahead and continue just playing two mana spells and leaving up three mana but at this point i'm so far ahead that i might be able to just uh let them let them use their trick at this point um because I can make a pretty aggressive attack here. Um, the damage of them wasting mana every turn might have already been done. And if I go ahead and use a mage duel to remove one blocker and play a blood researcher and then make an alpha strike, they're going to take a ton of damage. Um, and any of my pests that they block are just going to lead my, make my blood researcher grow. And then I still have this specter of the fence to arc, activate next turn let's see if i mage duel down one blocker with my gnarled professor because it has trample um or with my specter of fence but i think it's given that we think they might have um enthusiastic study it's better to do the gnarled professor because that won't allow them to uh grow their creature big enough in response then an attack um and if they make some i'm gonna have two in the air I have six trample damage, and then a, a four four and a several one ones. Um, even if they have an enthusiastic study, say they want to use it to take down my gnarled professor, it's still going to trample over three damage, and then they basically have to chump my four four, and then they take uh, eight damage. They'd be down to three, and they'd have lost their board. And I'd only have lost my gnarled professor. So this, it, they're in a very difficult spot here. And in fact, they don't find blocks to survive. 
Um, so there we go. We pick up another win. We're uh, up to five wins. That's where we get to Profit Town. Let's see if we can keep it going. Okay, we're here um, looking to pick up win number six if we can. Keep this uh, keep this win streak going. And again, we have one of these hands that's pretty short on mana. That is a close decision. Um, this time we're back on the draw. So we will have an extra draw step to get there. Any land will allow me to play this Augmenter. Um, but that's really not going to be enough to let me survive. I'm, I'm going to have to draw a black source at some point. But I, I think that... Um, I think on these land light hands... Uh, when I'm on the draw, it's it's fine to me, for me to just uh, put my faith in my deck that I can draw what I need, and uh, my faith, you know, is rewarded. I immediately draw a black source, even get to leave up this lash of malice, turn one. Okay, looks like it's gonna be the mirror match. Uh, they go for a hunt for specimens into a pest summoning. I don't want to use the lash of malice on this pest it's not gonna disrupt my game plan at all um i'm gonna find a better use for this lash of malice for instance if they want blood researcher right here i definitely want to be able to kill that um but they go for a pest summoning and now uh i think it's best for me to just play this researcher and get an attack and if they want to double block my fanatic to get it off the board that's a fine trade for me because it's going to grow my blood researcher up to a 3-3 menace and in this matchup, um, they're going to have so many... Ideally, their deck has a lot of use for these life gain triggers. And so if I trade off those pests as early as possible um, before they can get triggers out of them that are beneficial to the rest of their board, uh, that's going to be better for me. So now I have a decision to make about how to line up my attack here. Um, they left their mana up, which is a little bit suspicious. Um, I'm definitely going to attack with my lifelink creature again to, to grow the blood researcher. The question is, do I want to attack with this blood researcher? Giving them the option to triple block it if they want. Um, I do have this Lash of Malice, so I could potentially blow out a triple block. But with them leaving mana up, I don't think I'm going to go for it proactively. Um, so if I make the attack with the blood researcher, allowing the triple block... Uh, I'm just going to let the trade happen. Like I said, these pests can be useful, pretty useful for my opponent. And so trading them off um, could be beneficial. There is also the option that if I attack with the Blood Researcher, they may make some sort of mistake. Um, they, they could decide not to block it, or they could go for a double block and then go for a trick, in which case I could blow them out with Lash of Malice. Um... And it looks like that's what they're going to do. They're going for a double block plus a trick. So I, I get a really good result here. Um, and my opponent maybe should have been able to realize that I had the Lash of Malice. Just paying attention to stops on the turn that they played their hunt for specimens. Um, I was getting priority even though I had only one black man up. So that was something that my opponent, if they were aware, could have deduced that I had Lash of Malice. Um, or village, right? No, I couldn't have village rights because I didn't have a creature on the board, so it wouldn't give me stops. Um, okay, so they just managed to... Yeah, we get an excellent trade uh, there with the Lash of Malice, and we grow our stuff. They manage a 2-5 a here. And now I think I'm in such a position that I can just get ultra-aggressive here um, by using this Mage Duel to, to remove their 2-5 blocker and attacking with everything. I think that's going to put them in a pretty difficult position. I'm attacking for 10 this turn, and if they don't chump, the only thing they can chump is a 2-2, which isn't a very good chump for them. Uh, and if they don't chump, they're down to 8. I have this 5-5 five, five menace creature out there, um, as well as the 3-3 three, three trampler that could become very big uh, in a few more land drops. And then I also have this Spectre of the Fens, which, you know, is going to provide an invasive threat plus some reach. If I'm not drawing anything else, I can activate it. So applying some pressure to the life total and taking this aggressive line, I think is really going to work out for me. Also just denying them mana. Um, it means that they're going to be able to do 
fewer things on their turn. And all they can manage is a tap creature. That's no good for them. Uh, so now unless they have Lash of Malice, they're just going to be dead on board. There's no block they can make to survive. And it doesn't look like they have Lash of Malice. So, yep. So we managed to pick up a quick sixth win. And we get to go for... Uh, we get to go for our seventh win. See if we can get the trophy. Okay, we're here for the last round. Going for all the marbles. It's uh, We can either get to seven wins or we can pick up our third loss. Looking at our opening hand, um, it's excellent. Being on the play, we're going to get to go three drop and a four drop. And the four drops can be very powerful. And we draw a two drop to boot. So now our curve is excellent as well. Um, probably on this third turn here, I'm going to want to play the Blood Researcher out. Um, it's just more likely to be able to get damage through on the next turn, uh, as well as I want it out there before I play the Spring Main Sur Servin so that it can grow. Um, and it looks like they're just guy colors. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to go three colors too too often things really have to go right for for your three colors to work out well and have a good result um here they they have a spectacle mage i definitely want to try and offer the trade here uh the in the is it colored decks the spectacle mage is really important for for ramping into their expensive spells their expensive spells are definitely where their power comes from there we have a bit of a decision here. Do we want the Inkling Summoning or the Pest Summoner or something else? Um, but I think it's between one of those two. And I think I think it's worthwhile to go with the Inkling Summoner Summoning. Um, I'm the aggressor. Even though I have the Blood Researcher here, uh, I'm the aggressor here. And Pest Summoning is better when when I can either chump block with the tokens to to win the race in that effect or I have some other way to sacrifice them to grow my blood researcher but with what I've got here the pest summoning tokens wouldn't be that effective um whereas this 2-1 flyer it can attack into their mage and um threaten to trade or or just get in for the damage I think either one would have been defensible but I think that Getting the summoning is the inkling summonings just a little bit better, maybe. We're we're already presenting quite a board, and here they play another spectacle mage. Um Yeah, our board's looking pretty good. And they miss a land drop, so that's that's pretty brutal for them. Uh so now I definitely want to see if I can get one of these spectacle mages off the board as I don't want them to be able to play a five mana spell unless they hit a land uh when they're stuck on three land if they both ha have both those mages out there they're going to be able to play a five drop um whereas if i can trade one of them off then they won't be able to so i go ahead and attack with the blood researcher here as well uh i'm fine if they want to try and double block that um and it looks like they just want to take it all so we just get to continue developing their board. It doesn't mean that they're going to be able to cast a five mana spell, but our board is is so dominant that I don't know what five mana spell could save them here. And it looks like they have a pigment storm for for our gnarled um, gnarled professor. But we've got some excellent attacks here, and if we if we go ahead and play our servant pre combat to grow our blood researcher. We can attack with everything. Uh, they don't have any profitable blocks. The the only unless of course they have uh, shock in hand or um, infuriate maybe, but um, without any sort of trick, they'd be forced to just um, block our colony and chump block our professor of zoomancy. And it doesn't look like they're getting priority, so. Uh, they're going to have to trade and chump and still go down to one, facing down um, quite a board. I'm feeling like the only way they can get out of this now is with, uh, I think it's called Draconic in Intervention, maybe. It wraths the board, but um, yeah, and they'd have the Pigment Storm in Graveyard that they could exile with it. But uh, barring that, I really don't see them getting out of this. 
And that is a rare, so... Or maybe even Mythic Rare. And there we go. We pick up the seventh win. So we get the trophy with this deck. Um, after the after the rough start, we managed to pull it through. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, and I, I will plan on doing more of these in the future. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you'd like to catch all my future videos as they come out, go ahead and click the subscribe button below. And we'll see you next time.